how would you describe this picture? Probably say red car. Black car. Red house. Fluffy white dog. Uh, really adorable, cute, fluffy white, black dog. So using color as a way to identify things such as cars and dogs is a very natural thing to do. There's no judgment, no opinion, no nothing when we refer to a white dog as a white dog or a red car as a red car. But the color of our skin seems to be of great importance to our society. We go to great lengths to just avoid the mention of skin color, as if just mentioning skin color brings along with it enormous implications about a person. We are supposed to be colorful. We are not supposed to see the color in other people. But why? I mean, what's the big deal about skin color? And what is it about skin color that brings along with it enormous implications about a person? And I realize those are very difficult questions to answer. But we can start by using science to get a better understanding of skin color. And why some of us are white, some of us are brown, black, or somewhere in between. Scientists say that around 100,000 years ago, everybody on this planet, all of our ancestors, were dark skinned. And they all lived in a region in Africa with very strong UV rays, which are just the sun's rays. And it was because of these strong UV rays that our ancestors actually had their dark pigmentation. Their darker pigmentation uh, protected them from the harmful effects of UV radiation. But obviously the sun isn't harmful and UV rays aren't harmful either. They also provide us with a healthy dosage of vitamin D, which is necessary for our survival. And so, our ancestors evolved to have a darker pigmentation so that they could block out the harmful effects of the rays, but still absorb enough sunlight so that they could produce vitamin D. All right, so flash forward a few thousand years and people start to migrate out of Africa. And they move to places like the Middle East, and then from there, some went to Europe, some went to India, from India, some went to Southeast Asia and the rest of uh, Asia. And then around 15,000 years ago, some of these humans crossed over into North and South America. And based on research done by Professor Nina Jablonski at Penn State University, based on where these early humans ended up, their skin color had to actually adjust to the different levels of UV radiation in their new homes. For those who ended up in the Nordics, where there was very little sunlight, their darker pigmentation actually worked against them and prevented them from getting the adequate amount of sunlight which they needed. So, evolution worked its magic over time, and these Nordic peoples lost their darker pigmentation in favor of a lighter one, which allowed them to better absorb the sunlight in their home and thus boost their vitamin D production. So in summary, those early humans that went to regions with very little sunlight ended up having lighter skin. And those who went to regions with very high amounts of sunlight ended up having darker skin. So based on more research done by Professor Nina Jablonski, there is a direct correlation between UV radiation and skin color. So let's pause for a second and take a look uh, this map. And this map essentially shows the different levels of UV radiation in various parts of the world. If you just take a second to soak this in, you'll actually kind of see that there is some sort of correlation between UV radiation and skin color. Isn't that fascinating? What this map beautifully illustrates to us is that skin color is simply a reflection of where our ancestors land. There's no notion of race in skin color. 
And the next question you might ask yourself might be, what changes are required to happen in our DNA in order to see a change in skin color? And are those changes a big deal? Well, it turns out that even genetically speaking, skin color really isn't a big deal at all. So let's uh, examine this problem from the lens of a geneticist. Geneticists say that the average human genome has around 6 billion bases. And by base, I mean the A's, T's, C's, and G's that you might have learned about in the bio class. A mutation is a change to one or a set of these bases. Just wrap your mind around that. One tiny change to a genetic alphabet or a few alphabets in six billion letters. That is one mutation. In fact, blonde hair can now be traced back to a single letter change in our genome. A single letter change from an A to a G in a specific gene in our body is enough for blonde hair to be expressed in a person. And so how common are these mutations exactly? Well, scientists say that given any two random people, let's say two of us in this room, there are around 3 million differences in our genomes. And that might seem like a lot, 3 million, but just putting that into perspective, that's 3 million differences out of 6 billion bases. That means that only 0.05% of you makes you different from the person sitting next to you. And what's more? Skin color is dictated by an even smaller set of mutations. Some tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of that 0.05% variance in our genomes is responsible for skin color. And so looking around this room, there's perhaps thousands of ways by which we all differ from each other. But the most socially significant seems to be due to just a few small mutations that code for the shade of our skin color. The next time you see someone, there's no need to be colorblind. Just be aware that the color of their skin is just one out of thousands of ways by which they differ from you. And there are six billion ways in which they're exactly identical.